This text is an Old Testament pseudepigraphic catalogue of demons summoned by King Solomon and how they can be countered by invoking angels and other magical techniques. It is one of the oldest magical texts attributed to King Solomon, dating 1st to 3rd century AD, the Testament of Solomon, translated from the Codex of the Paris Library after the edition of Fleck, Wiesenschnitt, Reiser. Testament of Solomon, son of David, who was king in Jerusalem and mastered and controlled all spirits of the air, on the earth and under the earth. By means of them also he wrought all the transcendent works of the temple, telling also of the authorities they wield against men and by what angels these demons are brought to naught, of the sage Solomon. Blessed art thou, O Lord God, who didst give Solomon such authority. Glory to thee and might unto the ages. Amen. And behold, when the temple of the city of Jerusalem was being builded and the artificers were working thereat, Ornias the demon came among them toward sunset, and he took away half of the pay of the chief devisor's little boy, as well as half his food, he also continued to suck the thumb of his right hand every day. And the child grew thin, although he was very much loved by the king. So King Solomon called the boy one day and questioned him, saying, Do I not love thee more than all the artisans who are working in the temple of God? Do I not give thee double wages and a double supply of food? How is it that day by day and hour beat hour thou growest thinner? But the child said to the king, I pray thee, O king, listen to what has befallen all that thy child hath. After we are all released from our work on the temple of God, after sunset, when I lie down to rest, one of the evil demons comes and takes away from me one half of my pay and one half of my food. Then he also takes hold of my right hand and sucks my thumb. And lo, my soul is oppressed, and so my body waxes thinner every day. Now when I Solomon heard this, I entered the temple of God, and prayed with all my soul, night and day, that the demon might be delivered into my hands, and that I might gain authority over him. And it came about through my prayer that grace was given to me from the Lord Sabaoth by Michael his archangel. He brought me a little ring, having a seal consisting of an engraved stone, and said to me, Take, O Solomon king, son of David, the gift which the Lord God has sent thee, the highest Sabaoth, with it thou shalt lock up all demons of the earth, male and female, and with their help thou shalt build up Jerusalem. But thou must wear this seal of God, and this engraving of the seal of the ring sent thee as a pentalpha. And I, Solomon, was overjoyed, and praised and glorified the God of heaven and earth. And on the morrow I called the boy, and gave him the ring, and said to him, Take this, and at the hour in which the demon shall come unto thee, throw this ring at the chest of the demon, and say to him, in the name of God, King Solomon calls thee hither. And then do thou come running to me, without having any misgivings or fear, in respect of aught thou mayest hear on the part of the demon. So the child took the ring, and went off, and behold, at the Zotao's customary hour, Ornias, the fierce demon, came like a burning fire to take the pay from the child. But the child, according to the instructions received from the king, threw the ring at the chest of the demon, and said, King Solomon calls thee hither. And then he went off at a run to the king, but the demon cried out aloud, saying, Child, why hast thou done this to me? Take the ring off me, and I will render to thee the gold of the earth. Only take this off me, and forbear to lead me away to Solomon. But the child said to the demon, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, I will not brook thee, so come hither. And the child came at a run, rejoicing, to the king, and said, I have brought the demon, O king, as thou didst command me, O my master. And behold, he stands before the gates of the court of thy palace, crying out and supplicating with a loud voice, offering me the silver and gold of the earth, if I will only bring him unto thee. And when Solomon heard this, he rose up from his throne, and went outside into the vestibule of the court of his palace. And there he saw the demon, shuddering and trembling. And he said to him, Who art thou? And the demon answered, I am called Ornias. And Solomon said to him, Tell me, O demon, to what zodiacal sign thou art subject. And he answered, To the water pourer, and those who are consumed with desire for the noble virgins upon earth. There appears to be a lacuna here, these I strangle. But in case there is no disposition to sleep, I am changed into three forms. Whenever men come to be enamoured of, women, 
I metamorphose myself into a comely female, and I take hold of the men in their sleep and play with them. And after a while, I again take to my wings and hie me to the heavenly regions. I also appear as a lion, and I am commanded by all the demons. I am offspring of the archangel Uriel, the power of God. I, Solomon, having heard the name of the archangel, prayed and glorified God, the Lord of heaven and earth. And I sealed the town demon and set him to work at stone cutting so that he might cut the stones in the temple, which, lying along the shore, had been brought by the Sea of Arabia. But he, fearful of the iron, continued and said to me, I pray thee, King Solomon, let me go free, and I will bring you all the demons. And as he was not willing to be subject to me, I prayed the Archangel Uriel to come and succor me, and I forthwith beheld the Archangel Uriel coming down to me from the heavens. And the angel bade the whales of the sea come out of the abyss, and he cast his destiny upon the ground, and that destiny made subject to him the great demon. And he commanded the great demon and bold Orneas to cut stones at the temple. And accordingly, I Solomon glorified the God of heaven and maker of the earth. And he bade Orneas come with his destiny and gave him the seal, saying, Away with thee, and bring me hither the prince of all the demons. So Orneas took the finger ring and went off to Beelzebul, who has kingship over the demons. He said to him, Hither, Solomon calls thee. But Beelzebul, having heard, said to him, Tell me, who is this Solomon of whom thou speakest to me? Then Orneas threw the ring at the chest of Beelzebul, saying, Solomon the king calls thee. But Beelzebul cried aloud with a mighty voice and shot out a great burning flame of fire. And he arose and followed Orneas and came to Solomon. And when I saw the prince of demons, I glorified the Lord God, maker of heaven and earth. And I said, Blessed art thou, Lord God Almighty, who has given to Solomon thy servant wisdom, the assessor of the wise, and has subjected unto me all the power of he devil. And I questioned him, and said, Who art thou? The demon replied, I am Beelzebub, the exarch of the demons, and all whom the demons have their chief seats close to me, and I it is who make manifest the apparition of each demon. And he promised to bring to me in bonds all the unclean spirits. And I again glorified the God of heaven and earth, as I do always give thanks to him. I then asked of the demon if there were females among them, and when he told me that there were, I said that I desired to see them. So Beelzebul went off at high speed, and brought unto me Onoskelis, that had a very pretty shape, and the skin of a fair-hued woman, and she tossed her head. And when she was come, I said to her, Tell me who art thou? But she said to me, I am called Onoskelis, a spirit wrought, Shabtai Saturn, lurking upon the earth. There is a golden cave where I lie, but I have a place that ever shifts. At one time I strangle men with a noose, at another I creep up from the nature to the arms, in margon worms. But my most frequent dwelling places are the precipices, caves, ravines. Oftentimes, however, do I consort with men in the semblance of a woman, and above all with those of a dark skin for they share my star with me, since they it is who privily or openly worship my star, without knowing that they harm themselves, and but whet my appetite for further mischief. For they wish to provide money by means of memory, commemoration, but I supply a little to those who worship me fairly. And I, Solomon, questioned her about her birth, and she replied, I was born of a voice untimely, the so-called echo of a man's ordure, as dropped in a wood. And I said to her, Under what star dost thou pass? And she answered me, Under the star of the full moon, for the reason that the moon travels over most things. Then I said to her, And what angel is it that frustrates thee? And she said to me, He that in thee or through thee is reigning. And I thought that she mocked me and bade a soldier strike her. But she cried aloud and said, I am subjected to thee, O king, by the wisdom of God given to thee and by the angel Joel. So I commanded her to spin the hemp for the ropes used in the building of the house of God, and accordingly, when I had sealed and bound her, she was so overcome and brought to naught as to stand night and day spinning the hemp. And I at once bade another demon to be led unto me, and instantly there approached me the demon Asmodeus, bound, and I asked him, 
Who art thou? But he shot on me a glance of anger and rage and said, And who art thou? And I said to him, Thus punished as thou art, answerest thou me. But he, with rage, said to me, But how shall I answer thee, for thou art a son of man, whereas I was born an angel's seed by a daughter of man, so that no word of our heavenly kind addressed to the earthborn can be overweening. Wherefore also my star is bright in heaven, and men call it, some the wane, and some the dragon's child. I keep near unto this star, so ask me not many things, for thy kingdom also after a little time is to be disrupted, and thy glory is but for a season, and short will be thy tyranny over us. And then we shall again have free range over mankind, so as that they shall revere us as if we were gods, not knowing, men that they are, the names of the angels set over us. And I, Solomon, on hearing this, bound him more carefully, and ordered him to be flogged with thongs of oxhide, and to tell me humbly what was his name and what his business. And he answered me thus, I am called Asmodeus among mortals, and my business is to plot against the newly wedded, so that they may not know one another, and I sever them utterly by many calamities, and I waste away the beauty of virgin women, and estrange their hearts. And I said to him, Is this thy only business? And he answered me, I transport men into fits of madness and desire, when they have wives of their own, so that they leave them, and go off by night and day to others that belong to other men, with the result that they commit sin and fall into murderous deeds. And I adjured him by the name of the Lord Sabaoth, saying, Fear God, Asmodeus, and tell me by what angel thou art frustrated. But he said, By Raphael, the archangel that stands before the throne of God, but the liver and gall of a fish put me to flight when smoked over ashes of the tamarisk. I again asked him and said, Hide not aught from me, for I am Solomon, son of David, king of Israel. Tell me the name of the fish which thou reverest. And he answered, It is the Glanos by name and is found in the rivers of Assyria, wherefore it is that I roam about in those parts. And I said to him, Hast thou nothing else about thee, Asmodeus? And he answered, The power of God knoweth, which hath bound me with the indissoluble bonds of yonder one's seal, that whatever I have told thee is true. I pray thee, King Solomon, condemn me not to go into water. But I smiled and said to him, As the Lord God of my fathers liveth, I will lay iron on thee to wear. But thou shalt also make the clay for the entire construction of the temple, treading it down with thy feet. And I ordered them to give him ten water jars to carry water in. And the demon groaned terribly and did the work I ordered him to do. And this I did, because that fierce demon Asmodeus knew even the future. And I, Solomon, glorified God, who gave wisdom to me, Solomon his servant. And the liver of the fish and its gall I hung on the spike of a reed, and burned it over Asmodeus because of his being so strong, and his unbearable malice was thus frustrated. And I summoned again to stand before me Beelzebul, the prince of demons, and I sat him down on a raised seat of honor, and said to him, Why art thou alone, prince of the demons? And he said to me, Because I alone am left of the angels of heaven that came down, for I was first angel in the first heaven being entitled Beelzebul, and now I control all those who are bound in Tartarus, but I too have a child, and he haunts the Red Sea, and on any suitable occasion he comes up to me again, being subject to me, and reveals to me what he has done, and I support him. Aunt, I Solomon said unto him, Beelzebul, what is thy employment? And he answered me, I destroy kings, I ally myself with foreign tyrants, and my own demons I set onto men, in order that the latter may believe in them and be lost, and the chosen servants of God, priests and faithful men, I excite unto desires for wicked sins and evil heresies and lawless deeds, and they obey me, and I bear them on to destruction, and I inspire men with envy and desire for murder and for wars and sodomy and other evil things, and I will destroy the world. So I said to him, Bring to me thy child, who is, as thou sayest, in the Red Sea. But he said to me, I will not bring him to thee, but there shall come to me another demon called Ephippus. Him will I bind, and he will bring him up from the deep unto me. And I said to him, How comes thy son to be in the depth of the sea, 
and what is his name? And he answered me, Ask me not, for thou canst not learn from me. However, he will come to thee by any command and will tell thee openly. I said to him, Tell me by what angel thou art frustrated. And he answered, By the holy and precious name of the Almighty God, called by the Hebrews by a row of numbers, of which the sum is, and among the Greeks it is Emmanuel Ward. And if one of the Romans adjure me by the great name of the power Elith, I disappear at once. The text must be faulty, for the word Emmanuel is the Hebrew. The sum is got by adding together the Greek numbers. I Solomon was astounded when I heard this, and I ordered him to saw up Thebe and Salzo marbles. And when he began to saw the marbles, the other demons cried out with a loud voice, howling because of their king Beelzebul. We hear of Pentelic marble in Strabo, but the reference in the text may be to Thebes in Egypt. But I Solomon questioned him, saying, If thou wouldst gain a respite, discourse to me about the things in heaven. And Beelzebul said, Hear, O king, if thou burn gum and incense and bulb of the sea, bar one, with nard and saffron, and light seven lamps in an earthquake, thou wilt firmly fix thy house, and if, being pure, thou light them at dawn in the sun alight, then wilt thou see the heavenly dragons, how they wind themselves along and drag the chariot of the sun. And I, Solomon, having heard this, rebuked him and said, Silence for this present, and continue to saw the marbles as I commanded thee. And I, Solomon, praised God, and commanded another demon to present himself to me. And one came before me, who carried his face high up in the air, but the rest of the spirit curled away like a snail. And it broke through the few soldiers, and raised also a terrible dust on the ground, and carried it upwards, and then again hurled it back to frighten us, and asked what questions I could ask as a rule. And I stood up, and spat on the ground in that spot, and sealed with the ring of God. And forthwith the dust wind stopped. Then I asked him, saying, Who art thou, O wind? Then he once more shook up a dust, and answered me, What wouldst thou have, King Solomon? I answered him, Tell me what thou art called, and I would fain ask thee a question, but so far I give thanks to. But the demon answered me, I am the spirit of the ashes, Tephras. And I said to him, What is thy pursuit? And he said, I bring darkness on men and set fire to fields, and I bring homesteads to naught, but most busy am I in summer. However, when I get an opportunity, I creep into corners of the wall by night and day, for I am offspring of the Great One and nothing less. Accordingly I said to him, Under what star dost thou lie? And he answered, In the very tip of the moon's horn, when it is found in the south, there is my star, for I have been bidden to restrain the convulsions of the Hemitertian fever, and this is why many men pray to the Hemitertian fever, using these three names, Bultala, Thalal, Melchal, and I heal them. And I said to him, I am Solomon, when therefore thou wouldst do harm, by whose aid dost thou do it? But he said to me, By the angels, by whom also the third day's fever is lulled to rest. So I questioned him and said, And by what name? And he answered, That of the archangel Azael. And I summoned the archangel Azael, and set a seal on the demon, and commanded him to seize great stones, and toss them up to the workmen on the higher parts of the temple. And being compelled, the demon began to do what he was bidden to do. And I glorified God afresh, who gave me this authority, and ordered another demon to come before me. And there came seven spirits, females, bound and woven together, fair in appearance and comely. And I, Solomon, seeing them, questioned them and said, Who are ye? But they, with one accord, said with one voice, we are of the thirty-three elements of the cosmic ruler of the darkness, Zer. And the first said, I am deception. The second said, I am strife. The third, I am clothod, which is battle. The fourth, I am jealousy. The fifth, I am power. The sixth, I am error. The seventh, I am the worst of all, and our stars are in heaven. Seven stars humble in sheen and all together and we are called as it were goddesses. We change our place all and together, and together we live, sometimes in Lydia, sometimes in Olympus, sometimes in a great mountain.
the Pleiades seem to be referred to, Seep Job Kixbay. In the revised version, canst thou bind the cluster of the Pleiades? They had a malign influence. The grouping of evil spirits by sevens is common in Babylonian and Jewish folklore. As examples I may cite the Testamentum of Reuben, Tite, and the seven evil spirits of the NT. Possibly, however, the seven planets are here in question, though this is unlikely, for they do not tally with the description given. Roma Tikporxi has the same phrase. For 33, we should read 36 elements. Note that later in the Testament, these seven spirits are not among the Cosmocrators, a proof that the document before us is a composite one. Paul speaks of the Cosmocrators in Ephraim Our wrestling is not against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the world rulers of this darkness. See Iren Her I I Tui. So I Solomon questioned them one by one, beginning with the first and going down to the seventh. The first said, I am deception. I deceive and weave snares here and there. I wet and excite heresies. But I have an angel who frustrates me, La Mechalal. Likewise also the second said, I am strife, strife of strifes. I bring timbers, stones, hangers, my weapons on the spot. But I have an angel who frustrates me, Baruchia Chel. Likewise also the third said, I am called Clotod, Boaux, which is battle and I cause the well-behaved to scatter and fall foul one of the other. And why do I say so much? I have an angel that frustrates me. Marmarath. Fabricius, Cod, Sodapiga. VT Volmer IPAs reads Clothon, which must be IQ Cluden, which Hesychius explains thus. Likewise also the fourth said, I cause men to forget their sobriety and moderation. I part them and split them into parties for strife follows me hand in hand. I rend the husband from the sharer of his bed, and children from parents, and brothers from sisters. But why tell so much to my despite? I have an angel that frustrates me, the great Balthial. Likewise also the fifth said, I am power. By power, I raise up tyrants and tear down kings. To all rebels, I furnish power. I have an angel that frustrates me, Astara Uth. Likewise also the sixth said, I am error, by Taum, O King Solomon, and I will make thee to err, as I have before made thee to err, when I caused thee to slay thy own brother, come. I will lead you into error, so as to pry into graves, quans, and teach them that dig, and I lead errant souls away from all piety, and many other evil traits are mine. But I have an angel that frustrates me, Uriel. Kip Testum of Simeon, Echek. C.I. King's own, a reference to necromancy, of which the object was to oblige the spirit of the dead to enter oneself. Likewise also the seventh said, I am the worst, and I make thee worse off than thou wast, because I will impose the bonds of Artemis. But the locust, all, will set me free, for by means thereof is it fated that thou shalt achieve my desire. For if one were wise, he would not turn his steps toward me. This refers to the closing incident narrated in the Testament, the sacrificing by Solomon of five locusts to Moloch, Tatian, Orat, at Graikos Capitund, speaks of Artemis Magos, she is the same as Hecate. So I, Solomon, having heard and wondered, sealed them with my ring. And since they were so considerable, I bade them dig the foundations of the Temple of God. For the length of it was cubits, and I bade them be industrious, and with one murmur of joint protest, they began to perform the tasks enjoined. But I, Solomon, glorified the Lord, and bade another demon come before me, and there was brought to me a demon, having all the limbs of a man, but without a head. And I, seeing him, said to him, Tell me, who art thou? And he answered, I am a demon. So I said to him, Which? And he answered me, I am called Envy, for I delight to devour heads, being desirous to secure for myself a head, but I do not eat enough, but am anxious to have such a head as thou hast. I, Solomon, on hearing this, sealed him, stretching out my hand against his chest, whereon the demon leapt up and threw himself down, and gave a groan, saying, Woe is me! Where am I come to? 
O oh, traitor Orneus, I cannot see. So I said to him, I am Solomon, tell me then how thou dost manage to see. And he answered me, by means of my feelings. I then, Solomon having heard his voice come up to me, asked him how he managed to speak, and he answered me, I, O King Solomon, am holy voice, for I have inherited the voices of many men. For in the case of all men who are called dumb, I it is who smashed their heads when they were children and had reached their eighth day. Then when a child is crying in the night, I become a spirit and glide by means of his voice. In the crossways. Also I have many services to render, and my encounter is fraught with harm. For I grasp in all instant a man's head, and with my hands, as with a sword, I cut it off and put it on to myself. And in this way, by means of the fire which is in me, through my neck it is swallowed up. I it is that sends grave mutilations and incurable on men's feet and inflict sores. This seems the sense of Enodiais, unless understood, trivialibus dis, to the demons of the wayside or crossroad. Hecate was such a goddess, and in CI we have mention of a diamond Enodia, the Latin trivia, as a substance the newt, pleur. Enodia, as blisters caused by walking, in Theophus Sud. And I, Solomon, on hearing this, said to him, Tell me how thou dost discharge forth the fire, out of what sources dost thou emit it? And the spirit said to me, From the day star, for here hath not yet been found that Elburion, to whom men offer prayers and kindle lights, and his name is invoked by the seven demons before me, and he cherishes them. Or, from the Orient. But I said to him, Tell me his name. But he answered, I cannot tell thee. For if I tell his name, I render myself incurable. But he will come in response to his name. And on hearing this, I Solomon said to him, Tell me then, by what angel thou art frustrated? And he answered, By the fiery flash of lightning. And I bowed myself before the Lord God of Israel, and bade him remain in the keeping of Beelzebul until Iax, Tadius, should come. Bornman conjectures a guardian or watcher, but the angel Iax recurs below in M. Shabi. Then I ordered another demon to come before me, and there came into my presence a hound, having a very large shape, and it spoke with a loud voice, and said, Hail, Lord, King Solomon. And I, Solomon, was astounded. I said to it, Who art thou, O hound? And it answered, I do indeed seem to thee to be a hound, but before thou wast, O King Solomon, I was a man that wrought many unholy deeds on earth. I was surpassingly learned in letters, and was so mighty that I could hold the stars of heaven back, and many divine works did I prepare for I do. Harm to men who follow after our star, and turn them to. And I seize the frenzied men by the larynx and so destroy them. The MS has a vox nihili. Can it mean her that is born of echo? See above P -A -T -A -N. And I, Solomon, said to him, What is thy name? And he answered, Staff, Rabdos. And I said to him, What is thine employment, and what results canst thou achieve? And he replied, Give me thy man, and I will lead him away into a mountainous spot, and will show him a green stone tossed to and fro, with which thou mayest adorn the temple of the Lord God. And I, Solomon, on hearing this, ordered my servant to set off with him, and to take the finger ring bearing the seal of God with him. And I said to him, Whoever shall show thee the green stone, seal him with this finger ring, and mark the spot with care, and bring me the demon hither. And the demon showed him the green stone, and he sealed it, and brought the demon to me. And I, Solomon, decided to confine with my seal on my right hand the two, the headless demon, likewise the hound, that was so huge, Erxahund, he should be bound as well. And I bade the hound keep safe the fiery spirit, so that lamps as it were might by day and night cast their light through its maw on the artisans at work. The text seems corrupt here. And I, Solomon, took from the mine of that stone shekels, for the supports of the table of incense, which was similar in appearance. And I, Solomon, glorified the Lord God, and then closed round the treasure of that stone, and I ordered afresh the demons to cut marble for the construction of the house of God. And I, Solomon, prayed to the Lord, and asked the hound, saying, By what angel, and art thou frustrated? And the demon replied, By the great Brius, Inalit. 
Briareus is suggested by Bornman as the right reading, but with little probability, since Briareus would not have been turned into an angel. And I praised the Lord God of heaven and earth, and bade another demon come forward to me. And there came before me one in the form of a lion roaring. And he stood and answered me, saying, O king, in the form which I have, I am a spirit quite incapable of being perceived. Upon all men who lie prostrate with sickness I leap, coming stealthily along, and I render the man weak, so that his habit of body is enfeebled. But I have also another glory, O king. I cast out demons, and I have legions under my control, and I am capable of being received at in my dwelling places, along with all the demons belonging to the legions under me. But I, Solomon, on hearing this, asked him, What is thy name? But he answered, Lion bearer, wrath, bust in kind. And I said to him, How art thou to be frustrated along with thy legions? What angel is it that frustrates thee? And he answered, If I tell thee my name, I bind not myself alone, but also the legions of demons under me. Dectikos seems here to bear this sense, as also in the fragment of a very old commentary on the Shepherd of Hermas in the Oxyrhynchus Papyri, Part Y by Grenfell and Hunt, P. The dwelling places are the persons of whom the spirit, good or evil, takes possession. So in the docetic actor, Iohannis, Edim M. R. James, the Christ says, I have no dwelling, and I have dwellings, I have no place, and I have places, I have no temple, and I have temples. Behold thyself in me who address thee. Radinos, slender tapering, is suggested by Bornman as the true reading, because a staff might be such. So I said to him, I adjure thee in the name of the god Sabayuth, to tell me by what name thou art frustrated along with thy host. And the spirit answered me, The great among men, who is to suffer many things at the hands of men, whose name is the figure, which is Emmanuel. He it is who has bound us, and who will then come and plunge us from the steep Kansas under water. He is noised abroad in the three letters which bring him down Sirdubaya. The allusion is to the swine of Gadara. The three characters are apparently the numbers. And I, Solomon, on hearing this, glorified God, and condemned his legion to carry wood from the thicket. And I condemned the swine lion-shaped one himself to saw up the wood small with his teeth, for burning in the unquenchable furnace for the temple of God. And I worshipped the Lord God of Israel, and bade another demon come forward. And there came before me a dragon, three-headed, of fearful hue. And I questioned him, Who art thou? And he answered me, I am a caltrop-like spirit, Baud, whose activity in three lines. But I blind children in women's wombs, and twirl their ears round, and I make them deaf, runce and mute. And I have again, in my third head, means of slipping in, Baut. And I smite men in the limbless part of the body, and cause them to fall down, and foam, and grind their teeth. But I have my own way of being frustrated, Jerusalem being signified in writing, unto the place called, of the head, Kand. For there is appointed the angel of the great council, and now he will openly dwell on the cross. He doth frustrate me, and to him am I subject. Tribolaios. The tribolos was a three-spiked instrument thrown on the ground to wound horses' feet. Buba, an unknown word, a word of doubtful sense, i.e. Golgotha. The old legend was that Adam's skull reposed in this spot, and that the cross was planted upon it. But in the place where thou sittest, O King Solomon, standeth a column in the air of purple. The demon called Ephippus hath brought it up from the Red Sea, from inner Arabia. He it is that shall be shut up in a skin bottle and brought before thee. But at the entrance of the temple, which thou hast begun to build, O King Solomon, lies stored much gold, which dig thou up and carry off. And I, Solomon, sent my servant, and found it to be as the demon told me, and I sealed him with my ring, and praised the Lord God. 2. The meaning of the last part of this compound is unknown. So I said to him, What art thou called? And the demon said, I am the crest of dragons. And I bade him make bricks in the temple. He had human hands. 
and I adored the Lord God of Israel, and bade another demon present himself. And there came before me a spirit in woman's form, that had a head without any limbs, Adiz, and her hair was dishevelled. And I said to her, Who art thou? But she answered, Nay, who art thou? And why dost thou want to hear concerning me? But, as thou wouldst learn, here I stand bound before thy face. Go, Waman, then into thy royal storehouses and wash thy hands. Then sit down afresh before thy tribunal and ask me questions, and thou shalt learn, O king, who I am. Here we seem to have the Greek head of Medusa transformed into a demon. And I, Solomon, did as she enjoined me and restrained myself because of the wisdom dwelling in me, Uwand, in order that I might hear of her deeds and reprehend them and manifest them to men. And I sat down and said to the demon, What art thou? And she said, I am called among men, O Bizuth, and by night I sleep not, but go my rounds over all the world and visit women in childbirth. And divining the hour I take my stand, Taul, and if I am lucky, I strangle the child, but if not, I retire to another place, for I cannot for a single night retire unsuccessful, for I am a fierce Kao Tao spirit, of myriad names and many shapes, and now hither, now thither I roam, and to westering parts I go my rounds. But as it now is, though thou hast sealed me round with the ring of God, thou hast done nothing. I am not standing before thee, and thou wilt not be able to command me, for I have no work other than the destruction of children, and the making their ears to be deaf, and the working of evil to their eyes, and the binding their mouths with a bond, and the ruin of their minds, and paining of their bodies. The Sophia, identified by Philo and the early fathers with the Logos, is supposed to have entered into and taken possession of Solomon, as it afterwards did with Jesus. Stamatihu, an unknown verb. Salipon. When I, Solomon, heard this, I marveled at her appearance, for I beheld all her body to be in darkness. But her glance was altogether bright and greeny, and her hair was tossed wildly like a dragon's, and the whole of her limbs were invisible, and her voice was very clear as it came to me. And I cunningly said, Tell me by what angel thou art frustrated, O evil spirit. By she answered me, By the angel of God called Aphorot, which is interpreted Raphael, by whom I am frustrated now and for all time. His name, if any man know it, and write the same on a woman in childbirth, then I shall not be able to enter her. Of this name, the number is Quesiad. And I, Solomon, having heard this, and having glorified the Lord, ordered her hair to be bound, and that she should be hung up in front of the temple of God, that all the children of Israel, as they passed, might see it, and glorify the Lord God of Israel, who had given me this authority, with wisdom and power from God, by means of this signet. Bornemann, Zeitscher, F.D., Hist, Theol, Pito, gives the tale of figures, A, Ert, A, Ert, F, Ert, A, Ur, M, Ert, L, Urs, Total, Burs. And I again ordered another demon to come before me, and the came, rolling itself along, one in appearance like to a dragon, but having the face and hands of a man, and all its limbs, except the feet, were those of a dragon, and it had wings on its back, and when I beheld it I was astonied, and said, Who art thou, demon, and what art thou called, and whence hast thou come, tell me? And the spirit answered and said, This is the first time I have stood before the O King Solomon. I am a spirit made into a god among men, but now brought to naught by the ring and wisdom vouchsafed to thee by God. Now I am the so-called winged dragon, Chatrouz, and I chamber not with many women, but only with a few that are of fair shape, which possess the name of Zuli, of this star. And I pair with them in the guise of a spirit winged in form, Coitum Harbans per nates, and she on whom I have leapt goes heavy with child, and that which is born of her becomes Eros. But since such offspring cannot be carried by men, the woman in question breaks wind, such is my role. Suppose then only that I am satisfied, and all the other demons molested and disturbed by thee will speak the whole truth. But those composed of fire, checks will cause to be burned up by fire, the material of the logs which is to be collected by them for the building in the temple. Teradrakan, a word not in the lexicons. Tade diapiros. And as the demon said this, 
I saw the spirit going forth from his mouth, and it consumed the wood of the frankincense tree, and burned up all the logs which we had placed in the temple of God. And I, Solomon, saw what the spirit had done, and I marveled. And having glorified God, I asked the dragon-shaped demon and said, Tell me, by what angel art thou frustrated? And he answered, By the great angel which has its seat in the second heaven, which is called in Hebrew, Bazazeth. And I, Solomon, having heard this, and having invoked his angel, condemned him to saw up marbles for the building of the temple of God. And I praised God, and commanded another demon to come before me. And there came before my face another spirit, as it were a woman in the form she had. But on her shoulders she had two other heads with hands. And I asked her, and said, Tell me, who art thou? And she said to me, I am Inepsigos, who also have a myriad names. And I said her, By what angel art thou frustrated? But she said to me, What seekest, what askest thou? I undergo changes, like the goddess I am called. And I change again, and pass into possession of another shape. And be not tough desirous therefore to know all that concerns me. But since thou art before me for this much, hearken. I have my abode in the moon, and for that reason I possess three forms. At times, I am magically chos invoked by the wise as Kronos. At other times, in connection with those who bring me down, I come down and appear in another shape. The measure of the element, Kas, is inexplicable and indefinable, and not to be frustrated. I then, changing into these three forms, come down and become such as thou seest me. But I am frustrated by the angel Rathanael, who sits in the third heaven. This, then, is why I speak to thee. Yonder temple cannot contain me, Mageyomene, perhaps the place or size of the heavenly body. I therefore Solomon prayed to my God, and I invoked the angel of whom Inepsigos spoke to me and used my seal. And I sealed her with a triple chain, and placed, beneath her, the fastening of the chain. I used the seal of God, and the Spirit prophesied to me, saying, This is what thou, King Solomon, doest to us. But after a time thy kingdom shall be broken, and again in season this temple shall be riven asunder. Kas and all Jerusalem shall be undone by the king of the Persians and Medes and Chaldeans. And the vessels of this temple which thou makest shall be put to servile uses of the gods, and along with them all the jars in which thou dost shut us up shall be broken by the hands of men. And then we shall go forth in great power hither and thither, and be disseminated all over the world, and we shall lead astray the inhabited world for a long season, until the Son of God is stretched upon the cross. For never before doth arise a king like unto him, one frustrating us all, whose mother shall not have contact with man. Who else can receive such authority over spirits, except he, whom the first devil will seek to tempt but will not prevail over? The number of his name is Dadan, which is Emmanuel. Wherefore, O King Solomon, thy time is evil, and thy years short and evil, and to thy servant shall thy kingdom be given, while us who's. I conjecture the sense which the word must bear in this context. Exmdida. This prophecy corresponds roughly to the one which Lactantius Institusa Divinda Libertosophodesi quotes from an apocryphal book of Solomon. And I, Solomon, having heard this, glorified God. And though I marveled at the apology of the demons, I did not credit it until it came true. And I did not believe their words. But when they were realized, then I understood, and at my death I wrote this testament to the children of Israel, and gave it to them, so that they might know the powers of the demons and their shapes, and the names of their angels, by which these angels are frustrated. And I glorified the Lord God of Israel, and commanded the spirits to be bound with bonds indissoluble. And having praised God, I commanded another spirit to come before me, and there came before my face another demon, having in front the shape of a horse, but behind of a fish. And he had a mighty voice, and said to me, O King Solomon, I am a fierce spirit of the sea, and I am greedy of gold and silver. I am such a spirit as rounds itself and comes over the expanses of the water of the sea, and I trip up the men who sail thereon. For I round myself into a wave, and, and transform myself, and then throw myself on ships and come right in on them, and that is my business, and my way of getting hold of money and men. For I take the men, and whirl them round with myself, and hurl the men out of the sea. For I am not covetous of men's bodies, 
but cast them up out of the sea so far. But since Beelzebul, ruler of the spirits of air and of those under the earth and lord of earthly ones, hath a joint kingship with us in respect of the deeds of each one of us. Therefore I went up from the sea to get a certain outlook, Arquois in his company. A. Hey. Cap Jude. That Jude here indulges in no mere metaphor is clear from the words which follow, which embody the belief detailed in the Testament of Solomon, P. Descent or spiritual assault. But I also have another character and role. I metamorphose myself into waves and come up from the sea, and I show myself to men, so that those on earth call me Kunos, Paston. Why, because I assume the human form, and my name is a true one. For by my passage up into men, I send forth a certain nausea. I came then to take counsel with the Prince Beelzebul, and he bound me and delivered me into thy hands. And I am here before thee because of this seal, and thou dost now torment me. Behold now in two or three days the spirit that converseth with thee will fail, because I shall have no water. Cuff, Pliny, Nat, Hist. Sinos baton, ali kainos baston, ali neuros baston vocant. Folium habet vestigio hominis simile, fertet uvam nigram, in cuius acino nervum habet unde neuros bastos dissitur. The human form revealed itself in the footstep which the leaf resembled. Basanixis, CP, Matt, Mokevinad, Tets, Mark Fiatin, and I said to him, Tell me by what angel thou art frustrated. And he answered, By Iameth. And I glorified God. I commanded the spirit to be thrown into a file along with ten jugs of seawater of two measures each, rounds. And I sealed them round above the marbles and asphalt and pitch in the mouth of the vessel. And having sealed it with my ring, I ordered it to be deposited in the temple of God and I ordered another spirit to come before me. Pierre John II, Bound. And there came before my face another enslaved spirit, having obscurely the form of a man, with gleaming eyes, and bearing in his hand a blade. And I asked, Who art thou? But he answered, I am a lascivious spirit, engendered of a giant man who dies in the massacre in the time of the giants. I said to him, Tell me what thou art employed on upon earth, and where thou hast thy dwelling. And he said, My dwelling is in fruitful places, but my procedure is this. I seat myself beside the men who pass along among the tombs, and in untimely season I assume the form of the dead. And if I catch anyone, I at once destroy him with my sword. But if I cannot destroy him, I cause him to be possessed with a demon, and to devour his own flesh and the hair to fall off his chin. But I said to him, Do thou then be in fear of the God of heaven and of earth, and tell me by angel thou art frustrated. And he answered, He destroys me who is to become saviour, a man whose number, if any one shall write it on his forehead, Encax, he will defeat me, and in fear I shall quickly retreat, and indeed if any one write this sign on him, I shall be in fear. And I, Solomon, on hearing this, and having glorified the Lord God, shut up this demon like the rest. Chakas Riven of Faki Dut Thet. And I commanded another demon to come before me, and there came before my face thirty six spirits, their heads shapeless like dogs, but in themselves they were human in form, with faces of asses, faces of oxen, and faces of birds. And I, Solomon, on hearing and seeing them, wondered, and I asked them and said, Who are you? But they, of one accord with one voice, said, We are the thirty-six elements, the world rulers, wands of this darkness. But, O King Solomon, thou wilt not wrong us nor imprison us, nor lay command on us. But since the Lord God has given thee authority over every spirit, in the air and on the earth, and under the earth, therefore do we also present ourselves before thee like the other spirits, from ram and bull, from boilange both twin and crab, lion and virgin, scales and scorpion, archer, goat-horned, water-pourer, and fish. Acts D. Cosmocratoris, Teptois and Paul, F. Vician, Origen, C. Selsum, Vertui. Then I, Solomon, invoked the name of the Lord Sabaoth, and questioned each in turn as to what was its character, and I bade each one come forward and tell of its actions. Then the first one came forward and said, I am the first deacons of the zodical circle, and I am called the Ram, and with me 
are these two. So I put to them the question, Who are ye called? The first said, I, O Lord, am called Ruax, and I cause the heads of men to be idle, and I pillage their brows. But let me only hear the words, Michael, imprison Ruax, and at once I retreat. And the second said, I am called Barsaphael, and I cause those who are subject to my hour to feel the pain of migraine. If only I hear the words, Gabriel, imprison Barsaphael, at once I retreat. The third said, I am called Aratosael. I do harm to eyes and grievously injure them. Only let me hear the words, Uriel imprison Aratosael, sick, at once I retreat. Uh, but there seems to be a lacuna here. The fifth said, I am called Yudel, and I bring about a block in the ears and deafness of hearing. If I hear Uruel Yudel, I at once retreat. The sixth said, I am called Svendonile. I cause tumors of the parotid gland and inflammations of the tonsils and tetanic recurvation ukeia. If I hear Sabrael imprison Svendonile, at once I retreat. The Greek medical terms which stand in the Greek text are found in Hippocrates, Galen, and Quell. Oral. And the seventh said, I am called Svandor, and I weaken the strength of the shoulders and cause them to tremble, and I paralyze the nerves of the hands, and I break and bruise the bones of the neck, and I, I suck out the marrow. But if I hear the words Arael imprison Svandor, I at once retreat. And the eight said, I am called Belbel, I distort the hearts and minds of men. If I hear the words, Arael imprison Belbel, I at once retreat. And the ninth said, I am called Kurtael. I send colics in the bowels, I induce pains. If I hear the words, I oath imprison Kurtael, I at once retreat. The tenth said, I am called Metathiax, I cause the reins to ache. If I hear the words, Adonail imprison Metathiax, I at once retreat. The eleventh said, I am called Katanikotail. I create strife, ant and wrongs in men's homes, and send on them hard temper. If anyone would be at peace in his home, let him write on seven leaves of laurel the name of the angel that frustrates me, along with these names, Ai, Aio, sons of Sabaoth. In the name of the great God, let him shut up Katanikotail. Then let him wash the laurel leaves in water, and sprinkle his house with the water, from within to the outside and at once I retreat. The twelfth said, I am called Safathorael, and I inspire partisanship in men, and delight in causing them to stumble. If anyone will write on paper these names of angels, Ayako, Ialo, Ioelet, Sabaoth, Ithoth, Bai, and having folded it up, wear it round his neck or against his ear, I at once retreat and dissipate the drunken fit. The thirteenth said, I am called Bobal, Saeg, and I cause nervous illness by my assaults. If I hear the name of the great Adonael, imprisoned Bothothel, I at once retreat. The fourteenth said, I am called Kumertel, and I inflict shivering fits and torpor. If only I hear the words, Zoroel, imprison Kumentael, I at once retreat. The fifteenth said, I am called Roiled, I cause cold and frost and pain in the stomach. Let me only hear the words, I ax, bide not, be not warmed, for Solomon is fairer than eleven fathers. I at once retreat. The sixteenth said, I am called a trax. I inflict upon men fevers, irremediable and harmful. If you would imprison me, chop up coriander eames and smear it on the lips, reciting the following charm. The fever, which is from dirt, I exercise thee by the throne of the Most High God. Retreat from dirt, and retreat from the creature fashioned by God and at once I retreat. Pliny, Nat, Hist, Thax, notes the same use of coriander. Seminis grana tria in tertianis devorari, ubent aliqui ante accessionem, vel plura illini fronti. The testament evidently belongs to Pliny's age. The seventeenth said, I am called Eropile, on the stomach of men I sit, and cause convulsions in the bath and in the road, and wherever I be found or find a man, I throw him down. But if anyone will say to the afflicted into their ear these names, three times over, into the right ear, Eudarize, Sabune, Denue, I at once retreat. The eighteenth said, I am called Buldumech, 
I separate wife from husband and bring about a grudge between them. If anyone write down the names of thy sires, Solomon, on paper and place it in the antechamber of his house, I retreat thence, and the legend written shall be as follows. The God of Abram and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob commands thee, retire from this house in peace. And I at once retire. The 19th said, I am called now, and I take my seat on the knees of men. If anyone write on paper, Penunoboyol, depart Nathath, and touch thou not the neck, I at once retreat. The 20th said, I am called Mardaro, I send on men incurable fever. If anyone write on the leaf of a book, Sphener, Raphael, retire, drag me not about, flay me not, and tie it round his neck, I at once retreat. The twenty-first said, I am called Aleth, and I cause coughing and hard breathing in children. If anyone write on paper, Rorex, do thou pursue Aleth, and fasten it round his neck, I at once retire. There must here be a lacuna in the text. The twenty-third said, I am called Nephthada, I cause the reins to ache, and I bring about disury. If anyone write on a plate of tin the words, Ayathoth, Uruel, Nephthada, and fasten it round the loins, I at once retreat. The twenty-fourth said, I am called Acton, I cause ribs and lumbic muscles to ache. If one engrave on copper material, taken from a ship which has missed its anchorage, this, Marmara Oath, Saba Oath, pursue Acton and fasten it round the loin, I at once retreat. The twenty-fifth said, I am called Anatreth, and I rend burnings and fevers into the entrails. But if I hear, Arara, Charara, instantly do I retreat. The twenty-sixth said, I am called Enenuth. I steal away men's minds, and change their hearts, and make a man toothless, and... If one write, Alazul, pursue Enenuth, and tie the paper round him, I at once retreat. The twenty-seventh said, I am called Faith, I make men consumptive and cause hemorrhagia. If one exercise me in wine, sweet-smelling and unmixed by the eleventh aeon, ah, and say, I exercise thee by the eleventh aeon to stop, I demand feth, axiopheth, then give it to the patient to drink, and I at once retreat. A Gnostic reference, just above eleven fathers were mentioned. The twenty-eighth said, I am called Harpax, and I send sleeplessness on men. If one write, Kokfnedismos, and bind it round the temples, I at once retire. The twenty-ninth said, I am called Anoster. I engender uterine mania and pains in the bladder. If one powder into pure oil three seeds of laurel and smear it on, saying, I exercise thee, Anoster, stop by Marmoreau, at once I retreat. The thirtieth said, I am called Aliborith. If in eating come fish one has swallowed a bone, then he must take a bone from the fish and cough, and at once I retreat. The thirty-first said, I am called Hephezimireth, and cause lingering disease. If you throw salt, rubbed in the hand, into oil and smear it on the patient, saying, Seraphim, cherubim, help me, I at once retire. The thirty-second said, I am called Ichthion, I paralyze muscles and contuse them. If I hear Adonath, help, I at once retire. The thirty-third said, I am called Achonion, I lie among swaddling clothes and in the precipice. And if anyone write on fig leaves Lycurgos, taking away one letter at a time, and write it, reversing the letters, I retire at once. Lycurgos, Ikurgos, Kurgos, Irgos, Gos, Os, Tsarkomans. Botridon, for which Bornemann conjectures Boistrophidon. There is a parallel in a magic papyrus edited by Dieterich, Abraxas P. The 34th said, I am called Autothith, I cause grudges and fighting. Therefore, I am frustrated by Alpha and Omega, if written down. The 35th said, I am called Fithanoth, I cast evil eye on every man. Therefore, the eye much suffering, if it be drawn, frustrates me. The 36th said, I am called Bianakith, I have a grudge against the body. I lay waste houses, I cause flesh to decay and all else that is similar. If a man write on the front door of his house, Melto Ardu Anath, I flee from that place. And I Solomon, when I heard this, glorified the God of heaven and earth, and I commanded them to fetch water in the temple of God. And I furthermore prayed to the Lord God to cause the demons without 
that hamper humanity to be bound and made to approach the temple of God. Some of these demons I condemn to do the heavy work of the construction of the temple of God. Others I shut up in prisons. Others I ordered to wrestle with fire in the making of gold and silver, sitting down by lead and spoon, and to make ready places for the other demons in which they should be confined. And I, Solomon, had much quiet in all the earth and spent my life in profound peace, honored by all men and by all under heaven. And I built the entire temple of the Lord God, and my kingdom was prosperous, and my army was with me, and for the rest the city of Jerusalem had repose, rejoicing and delighted. And all the kings of the earth came to me from the ends of the earth to behold the temple which I builded to the Lord God, and having heard of the wisdom given to me, they did homage to me in the temple, bringing gold and silver and precious stones, many and divers, and bronze and iron and lead and cedar logs. And woods decay not they brought me, for the equipment of the temple of God. And among them also the queen of the south, being a witch, came in great concern and bowed low before me to the earth. And having heard my wisdom, she glorified the God of Israel, and she made formal trial of all my wisdom, of all love in which I instructed her, according to the wisdom imparted to me. And all the sons of Israel glorified God. And behold, in those days one of the workmen, of ripe old age, threw himself down before me and said, King Solomon, pity me, because I am old. So I bade him stand up and said, Tell me, old man, all you will. And he answered, I beseech you, king, I have an only born son, and he insults and beats me openly, and plucks out the hair of my head, and threatens me with a painful death. Therefore I beseech you, avenge me. And I, Solomon, on hearing this, felt compunction as I looked at his old age, and I bade the child be brought to me. And when he was brought, I questioned him whether it were true. And the youth said, I was not so filled with madness as to strike my father with my hand. Be kind to me, O king, for I have not dared to commit such impiety, poor wretch that I am. But I, Solomon, on hearing this from the youth, exhorted the old man to reflect on the matter and accept his son's apology. However, he would not, but said he would rather let him die. And as the old man would not yield, I was about to pronounce sentence on the youth when I saw Ornias, the demon, laughing. I was very angry at the demon's laughing in my presence, and I ordered my men to remove the other parties and bring forward Ornias before my tribunal. And when he was brought before me, I said to him, Accursed one, why didst thou look at me and laugh? And the demon answered, Prithee, king, it was not because of thee I laughed, but because of this ill-starred old man and the wretched youth, his son. For after three days his son will die untimely, and lo, the old man desires to foully make away with him. But I, Solomon, having heard this, said to the demon, Is that true that thou speakest? And he answered, It is true, O king. And I, on hearing that, bade them remove the demon, and that they should again bring before me the old man with his son. I bade them Yahweh's make friends with one another again, and I supplied them with food. And then I told the old man after three days to bring his son again to me here. And, said I, I will attend to him. And they saluted me and went their way. And when they were gone, I ordered Ornias to be brought forward and said to him, Tell me how you know this. And he answered, We demons ascend into the firmament of heaven and fly about among the stars, and we hear the sentences which go forth upon the souls of men, and forthwith we come, and whether by force of influence, or by fire, or by sword, or by some accident, we veil our act of destruction, and if a man does not die by some untimely disaster or by violence, then we demons transform ourselves in such a way as to appear to men and be worshipped in our human nature. I therefore, having heard this, glorified the Lord God, and again I questioned the demon, saying, Tell me how ye can ascend into heaven, being demons, and amidst the stars and holy angels intermingle. And he answered, Just as things are fulfilled in heaven, so also on earth are fulfilled. The types, us, ours, of all of them, for there are principalities, authorities, world rulers, us and we demons fly about in the air, and we hear the voices of the heavenly beings and survey all the powers, and as having no ground, basis, on which to alight and rest, we lose strength and fall off like leaves from trees. 
and men seeing us imagine that the stars are falling from heaven. But it is not really so, O king, but we fall because of our weakness, and because we have nowhere anything to lay hold of, and so we fall down like lightnings, and in the depth of night and suddenly, and we set cities in flames and fire the fields, for the stars have firm foundations in the heavens like the sun and the moon. And keep or heaven ve, oxpo rom the ve. Luke X. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. June. And I Solomon, having heard this, ordered the demon to be guarded for five days. And after the five days I recalled the old man, and was about to question him. But he came to me in grief, and with black face. And I said to him, Tell me, old man, where is thy son, and what means this garb? And he answered, Lo, I am become childless, and sit by my son's grave in despair, for it is already two days that he is dead. But I, Solomon, on hearing that, and knowing that the demon Ornias had told me the truth, glorified the God of Israel. And the Queen of the South saw all this and marveled, glorifying the God of Israel, and she beheld the temple of the Lord being builded, and she gave a siklos chows of gold and one hundred myriads of silver and choice bronze, and she went into the temple, and she beheld the altar of incense and the brazen supports of this altar, and the gems of the lamps flashing forth of different colours, and of the lampstand of stone, and of emerald, and hyacinth, and sapphire, and she beheld the vessels of gold, and silver, and bronze, and wood, and the folds of skins dyed red with madder, and she saw the bases of the pillars of the temple of the Lord. All were of one gold, marks apart from the demons whom I condemned to labour, and there was peace in the circle of my kingdom and over all the earth. A shekel. Philo has the form Cyclos, I. Cyclos is the usual spelling in the LXX. There seems to be here a lacuna in the MS. Dice. And it came to pass, which I was in my kingdom, the king of the Arabians, Adares, sent me a letter, and the writing of the letter was written as follows. To King Solomon, all hail. Lo, we have heard, and it hath been heard unto all the ends of the earth concerning the wisdom vouchsafed in thee, and that thou art a man merciful from the Lord, and understanding hath been granted thee over all the spirits of the air, and on earth, and under the earth. Now forasmuch as there is present in the land of Arabia a spirit of the following kind. At early dawn there begins to blow a certain wind until the third hour, and its blast is harsh and terrible, and it slays man and beast, and no spirit can live upon earth against this demon. I pray thee then, for as much as the spirit is a wind, contrive something according to the wisdom given in thee by the Lord thy God, and deign to send a man able to capture it, and behold King Solomon, I and my people, and all my land, will serve thee unto death. And all Arabia shall be at peace with thee, if thou wilt perform this act of righteousness for us. Wherefore we pray thee, contemn not our humble prayer, and suffer not to be utterly brought to naught the eparchy subordinated to thy authority. Because we are suppliants, both I and my people and all my land, farewell to my Lord, all health. And I Solomon read this epistle, and I folded it up and gave it to my people and said to them, After seven days shalt thou remind me of this epistle. And Jerusalem was built, and the temple was being completed. And there was a stone, oh, the end stone, oh, of the corner lying there, great chosen out, one which I desired lay in the head of the corner of the completion of the temple. And all the workmen, and all the demons helping them came to the same place, to bring up the stone, and lay it on the pinnacle of the holy temple, and were not strong enough to stir it, and lay it upon the corner allotted to it. For that stone was exceedingly great and useful for the corner of the temple, Kippul Piestui, who combines in the same way Pis Dixiwans and Isa. Dixiwans Kippur Mat, Bitstein, Mark the Key, Luke the Kiwan C. And after seven days, being reminded of the epistle of Adaris, king of Arabia, I called my servant and said to him, Order thy camel, and take for thyself a leather flask, and take also this seal, and go away into Arabia, to the place in which the evil spirit blows, and there take the flask, and the signet ring in front of the mouth of the flask, and hold them, towards the blast of the spirit. And when the flask is blown out, thou wilt understand that the demon is in it. Then hastily tie up the mouth of two flask, 
and seal it securely with the seal ring, and lay it carefully on the camel, and bring it me hither. And if on the way it offer thee gold or silver or treasure in return for letting it go, see that thou be not persuaded, but arrange, without using oath, to release it. And then if it point out to the places where are gold or silver, mark the places and seal them with this seal, and bring the demon to me, and now depart and fare thee well. Then the youth did as was bidden him, and he ordered his camel, and laid on it a flask, and set off into Arabia. And the men of that region would not believe that he would be able to catch the evil spirit. And when it was dawn, the servant stood before the spirit's blast, and laid the flask on the ground, and the finger ring on the mouth of the flask. And the demon blew through the middle of the finger ring into the mouth of the flask, and going in, blew out the flask. But the man promptly stood up to it, and drew tight with his hand the mouth of the flask, in the name of the Lord God of Sabaoth. And the demon remained within the flask, and after that the youth remained in that land three days to make trial, and the spirit no longer blew against that city, and all the Arabs knew that he had safely shut in the spirit. Then the youth fastened the flask on the camel, and the Arabs sent him forth on his way with much honor and precious gifts, praising and magnifying the God of Israel. But the youth brought in the bag and laid it in the middle of the temple. And on the next day, I, King Solomon, went into the temple of God and sat in deep distress about the stone of the end of the corner. And when, as I entered the temple, the flask stood up and walked around some seven steps and then fell on its mouth and did homage to me. And I marveled that even along with the bottle, the demon still had power and could walk about. And I commanded it to stand up. And the flask stood up and stood on its feet all blown out. And I questioned him, saying, Tell me, who art thou? And the spirit within said, I am the demon called Ephippus, that is in Arabia. And I said to him, Is this thy name? And he answered, Yes, wheresoever I will, I alight and set fire and do to death. And I said to him, By what angel art thou frustrated? And he answered, By the only ruling God, that hath authority over me even to be heard, he that is to be born of a virgin, and crucified by the Jews on a cross, whom the angels and archangels worship, he doth frustrate me and enfeeble me of my great strength, which has been given me by my father the devil. And I said to him, What canst thou do? And he answered, I am able to remove ton mountains, to overthrow the oaths of kings. I wither trees and make their leaves to fall off. And I said to him, Canst thou raise this stone? and lay it for the beginning of this corner which exists in the fair plan of the temple, would back. And he said, Not only raise this, O king, but also with the help of the demon who presides over the Red Sea, I will bring up the pillar of air, Dax, and will stand it where thou wilt in Jerusalem. Cupboard the faith which removes mountains. Bornemann suggests that the gate of the temple called Beautiful, Acts the Third, is referred to. I conjecture the sense. Saying this, I laid stress on him, and the flask became as if depleted of air, and I placed it under the stone, and the spirit girded himself up and lifted it up top of the flask, and the flask went up the steps, carrying the stone, and laid it down at the end of the entrance of the temple. And I, Solomon, beholding the stone raised aloft and placed on a foundation, said, Truly the scripture is fulfilled, which says, The stone which the builders rejected on trial, that same is become the head of the corner. For this it is not mine to grant, but God's, that the demon should be strong enough to lift up so great a stone, and deposit it in the place I wished. And Ephippus led the demon of the Red Sea with the column, and they both took the column and raised it aloft from the earth. And I outwitted these two spirits so that they could not shake the entire earth in a moment of time, and then I sealed round with my bocha ring on this side and that, and said, Watch and the spirits have remained upholding it until this day, for proof of the wisdom vouchsafed to me. And there the pillar was hanging of enormous size, in mid-air, supported by the winds, and thus the spirits appeared underneath, like air, supporting it. And if one looks fixedly, the pillar is a little oblique, being supported by the spirits, and it is so today. And I Solomon questioned the other spirit, which came up with the pillar from the depth of the Red Sea. And I said to him, who art thou, and what calls thee, and what is thy business? For I hear many things about thee. And the demon answered, 
I, O King Solomon, am called a Bazithibod. I am a descendant of the Archangel. Once as I sat in the first heaven, of which the name is Ameliouth, I then am a fierce spirit and winged, and with a single wing, plotting against every spirit under heaven. I was present when Moses went in before Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and I hardened his heart. I am he whom Ianas and Iambres invoked homing Dakan with Moses in Egypt. I am he who fought against Moses with wonders with signs. Oikoik Sumanoi in the MS, a vox nihili. If we had the apocrypha of Ianas and Iambres, we might understand the reference. Tim, the tree. I said therefore to him, how wast thou found in the Red Sea? And he answered, In the exodus of the sons of Israel, I hardened the heart of Pharaoh, and I excited his heart and that of his ministers, and I caused them to pursue after the children of Israel, and Pharaoh followed with me and all the Egyptians. Then I was present there, and we followed together. And we all came up upon the Red Sea, and it came to pass, when the children of Israel had crossed over, the water returned and hid all the host of the Egyptians and all their might. And I remained in the sea, being kept under this pillar. But when Ephippus came, being sent by thee, shut up in the vessel of a flask, he fetched me up to thee. I therefore, Solomon, having heard this, glorified God and adjured the demons not to disobey me, but to remain supporting the pillar. And they both swear, saying, The Lord thy God liveth, we will not let go this pillar until the world's end, but on whatever day this stone fall, then shall be the end of the world, Chiu Kam. This legend of the heavy cornerstone and of the spirit supporting a column in the temple reappears in the Georgian Acts of Nona in the 4th century. There it is a huge wooden column that is lifted by spirit agency when the king and workmen had failed to move it into place. The spirits support it in the air before letting it sink into its place. These acts will shortly appear in an English translation by Miss Wardrop in the forthcoming number of the Study Biblica, Clarendon Press, Anoins. And I, Solomon, glorified God and adorned the temple of the Lord with all fair seeming. And I was glad in spirit in my kingdom, and there was peace in my days. And I took wives of my own from every land who were numberless. And I marched against the Jebuseans, and there I saw Jebusean, daughter of a man, and fell violently in love with her, and desired to take her to wife, along with my other wives. And I said to their priests, Give me the Sunmanites, i.e. Shunammite, to wife, Bice. But the priests of Moloch said to me, If thou lovest this maiden, go in, and worship our gods, the great god Raphan and the god called Moloch. I therefore was in fear of the glory of God, and did not follow to worship. And I said to them, I will not worship a strange God. What is this proposal that ye compel me to do so much? But they said, Car by our fathers. Song of Solfats of Vist, Utis, sick, stands in the MS. Perhaps Tais Theas should be read. And when I answered that, I would on no account worship strange gods, they told the maiden not to sleep with me until I complied and sacrificed to the gods. I then was moved, but crafty Eros brought and laid by her for me five grasshoppers, saying, Take these grasshoppers and crush them together in the name of the god Moloch, and then will I sleep with you. And this I actually did. And at once the Spirit of God departed from me, and I became weak as well as foolish in my words. And after that, I was obliged by her to build a temple of idols to Baal, Chanza, and to Rapha, and to Moloch, and to the other idols. Femius so rom hansenchen si. I then, wretch that I am, followed her advice, and the glory of God quite departed from me, and my spirit was darkened, and I became the sport of idols and demons. Wherefore I wrote out this testament, that ye who get possession of it may pity, and attend to the last things, gyakos, and not to the first, so that ye may find grace for ever and ever. Amen. Uh, C.P. Reverend Tsuku, the Solomonic Demons. For easy reference, here are the Solomonic Demons and their attributes. Baal, a king ruling in the east, who imparts invisibility and wisdom. He appears with a human head, or with that of a toad or cat, but sometimes with all at once. He speaks with a hoarse voice. Agaras, 
a duke ruling in the east who appears in the form of a comely old man ambling upon a crocodile and carrying a goshawk on his wrist. He makes those who run stand still, brings back runaways, teaches all languages, destroys spiritual and temporal dignities and causes earthquakes. He is of the order of the virtues. According to the vocabulary infernal, the special province of Agares is to put to flight the enemies of those whom he protects. Vasago, a mighty prince of the nature of Agaris, who declares things past, present and future, and discovers what has been lost or hidden. He is good by nature. This may account for his invocation, especially in ceremonial crystallomancy, by adepts of white magic. Gamigin, a great marquis, appearing in the form of a small horse or ass, but afterwards in human shape. He speaks hoarsely, teaching the liberal sciences, and giving news of souls who have died in sin. According to Wirus, he summons into the presence of the exorcist the souls of drowned men and of those detained in purgatory called magically cartagra, that is, the affliction of souls. They assume an aerial body, are visible to sight, and reply to questions. It's true. Koronzon. Marbas, a president who appears as a mighty lion and then in human shape. He answers truly concerning all things hidden or secret, causes and cures diseases, imparts skill in mechanics, and changes men into various shapes. Valafor, a powerful duke appearing as a many-headed lion. He leads those with whom he is familiar into theft, with the head of a hunter or a thief, says Wirus. He shows friendship till they are caught in the trap. Aemon, a strong and powerful marquis who appears like a wolf with a serpent's head and vomiting flame. When so ordered, he assumes a human shape, but with the teeth of a dog. He discerns past and future, procures love, and reconciles friends and foes. Barbatos, a great count and duke, who appears when the sun is in Sagittarius, with four noble kings and three companies of troops. He gives instructions in all the sciences, reveals treasures concealed by enchantment, knows the past and future, reconciles friends and those in power, and is of the order of the virtues. He also understands the songs of birds and the language of other animals, Wirus. Paimon, a great king, very obedient to Lucifer, he appears like a crowned man seated upon a dromedary, preceded by all manner of musicians. He speaks with a roaring voice, teaches all arts, sciences and secrets, gives and confirms dignities, makes men subject to the will of the magician, provides good familiars. He is observed towards the northwest and is of the order of dominions. It appears from Wirus that the operator may fail to understand this spirit, in which case he must stretch forth the character, sigil, belonging to him and command him to speak clearly. He can be difficult to conjure though, Choronzon. Buer, a great president who appears when the sun is in Sagittarius and teaches philosophy, logic, the virtues of herbs, etc. He heals all disease and gives good familiars. Gison, a mighty duke who appears like a cynocephalus and discerns the past, present and future, answers all questions, reconciles enemies and gives honors and dignities. Citri, a great prince who appears with a leopard's head but assumes a human form at the magician's command. He procures love between the two sexes and causes women to show themselves naked. Jusus secreta libenter detegit feminarum is ridens ludificansque ut se luxoris nudent. Virus, Beleth, a terrible and mighty king, riding on a pale horse, preceded by all manner of musicians. He is very furious when first summoned and must be commanded into a triangle or circle with the hazel wand of the magician pointed to the southeast. He must be received courteously and with homage, but a silver ring must be worn on the middle finger of the left hand, which must be held against the face. He procures love between man and woman and is of the order of the powers. Laragie, a powerful marquis, coming in the likeness of an archer, clad in green and bearing bow and quiver. He occasions battles and causes arrow wounds to putrefy. Eligor, a great duke, appearing as a goodly knight carrying a lance, pennant and scepter. He discovers hidden things, causes war, marshals armies, kindles love and lust. Sipar, 
a great duke who appears in red apparel and armed like a soldier. He inflames women with love for men and can transform them into other shapes till they have been enjoyed by their lovers. Botis, a great president and earl who appears like a horrid viper, but when commanded, assumes a human shape with large teeth and horns. He bears a sharp sword in his hand, discerns past, present and future, and reconciles friends and foes. Bathin, a mighty duke, who appears like a strong man with a serpent's tail, riding on a pale horse. He knows the virtue of herbs and precious stones, and can transport men swiftly from one country to another. Salios, a great duke, who appears like a brave soldier, riding on a crocodile crowned. He promotes love between the sexes. Person, a great king, who appears like a lion-headed man carrying a viper in his hand and riding on a bear, preceded by many trumpeters. He conceals and discovers treasures, discerns past, present and future, gives true answers concerning things human and divine, and provides good familiars. Morax, a great earl and president, who appears like a human-headed bull and gives skill in astronomy and the liberal sciences with good familiars. He knows the virtues of all herbs and precious stones. Epos, a mighty earl and prince appearing as an angel with a lion's head, the webbed feet of a goose and a hare's tail. He knows the past and future and imparts wit and courage. Does all he is supposed to, well, but caused me extreme misfortune also, Choronzon. Aini, a strong duke, who appears with the body of a handsome man and three heads, the first like a serpent, the second like a man, with two stars on the forehead, and the third like a cat. He rides on a viper and carries a blazing firebrand with which he spreads destruction. He imparts much cunning and gives true answers concerning private matters. Naberius, a valiant Marquis, who appears in the form of a crowing cock and flutters about the circle. He speaks hoarsely, gives skill in arts and sciences, especially rhetoric, and restores lost dignities and honors. Glazialabolus, a mighty president who comes in the form of a dog, but winged like a griffin. He teaches all arts and sciences instantaneously, incites to bloodshed, is the leader of all homicides, discerns past and future, and makes men invisible. Buna, a strong duke who appears as a three-headed dragon, the heads being respectively those of a dog, griffin, and man. He has a pleasant voice, he changes the places of the dead, causes demons to crowd round sepulchres, gives riches, makes men wise and eloquent, answers questions truly. Ronobe, a great Marquis and Earl, appears in a monstrous form. He teaches rhetoric and the arts, gives a good understanding, the knowledge of tongues, and favour of friends and foes. Berith, a terrible duke, appearing in the form of a soldier in red apparel, with a golden crown, and bestriding a red horse. The ring used for Berith is required for his evocation. He gives true answers of things past, present and to come, turns all metals into gold, gives and confirms dignities. He speaks in a clear and persuasive voice, but is a great liar and not to be trusted. Astaroth, a great and powerful duke, appearing like a beautiful angel riding on an infernal dragon and carrying a viper in his right hand. He must not be permitted to approach on account of his stinking breath and the magician must defend his face with the magic ring. Astaroth answers truly concerning past, present and future, discovers all secrets and gives great skill in the liberal sciences. He will also discourse willingly on the fall of the spirits, but pretends that he himself was exempt from their lapse. Wirus. Do not be surprised if Astaroth turns out to be a beautiful female and the noxious odor is instead the most pleasant scent that tries to lure you from the circle. Remember to guard yourself with the silver ring, Koronzon. Porneus, a great marquis, appears as a sea monster. He teaches all arts and sciences, gives a good reputation and the knowledge of tongues, and causes men to be loved by their enemies, even as by their friends. Horus, a great president, who appears in the form of a strong man, and teaches the virtues of all herbs and precious stones, as well as logic and ethics. He makes men invisible, imparts wit, wisdom and eloquence, discovers treasures and restores things lost. Asmodee, 
a strong and powerful king, appears with three heads, the first like a bull, the second like a man, and the third like a ram. He has a serpent's tail, the webbed feet of a goose, and he vomits fire. He rides an infernal dragon, carries a lance and pennon, and is the chief of the power of Amimon. He must be invoked bareheaded and in a standing position, Wirus, for otherwise he will deceive. He gives the ring of virtues, teaches arithmetic, geomancy, and all handicrafts, answers all questions, makes men invisible, indicates the places of concealed treasures, and guards them if within the dominion of Amemon. Gay Api, a great president and prince, appears when the sun is in the southern signs, coming in a human shape and preceded by four powerful kings. He teaches philosophy and the liberal sciences, excites love and hatred, makes men insensible, gives instruction in the consecration of things which belong to the divination of Amemon, his king, delivers familiars out of the custody of magicians, gives true answers as to past, present and future, transports men speedily from place to place at the will of the exorcist. According to Wirus, he will speak outside the triangle, but what he says will be false. Furfur, a great earl, appears in the form of a heart with a fiery tail and will not speak until compelled within the triangle. He then assumes the form of an angel, speaking with a hoarse voice. He causes love between man and wife, raises thunder, lightning, and great winds, gives true answers about secret and divine things. Marchesias, a mighty Marquis, appears in the form of a wolf with the wings of a griffin, a serpent's tail, and fire issuing from his mouth. At the command of the operator, he assumes a human form. He is strong in battle, gives true answers to all questions, and is extremely faithful to the exorcist. He belongs to the order of dominations. Phoenix, a great marquis, appears like the bird of that name, singing dulcet tones in a child's voice. When he assumes human shape at the will of the magician, he speaks marvelously of all sciences, proves an excellent poet, and fulfills orders admirably. He hopes to return to the seventh thrones in years. Halpus, a great earl, appears in the form of a stock dove, speaking with a hoarse voice. He burns towns, visits the wicked with the sword, and can send men to fields of war or to other places. Or, according to Wirus, builds them and fills them with armed men. Malpas, a powerful president, appears at first like a crow, but afterwards, when so commanded, assumes a human form, speaking with a hoarse voice. He brings artificers swiftly from all parts of the world, destroys the desire and thoughts of enemies, gives good familiars, and receives a sacrifice kindly, but will deceive him who offers it. The reading of Wirus is preferable, i.e., temples and towers. Raum, a great earl, appears in the form of a crow, but assumes human shape when bidden. He steals treasure and carries it where commanded. He destroys cities and dignities. He discerns past, present and future. He causes love between friends and foes. Finally, he is of the order of the thrones. Focalor, a strong duke, appears in the form of a man with the wings of a griffin. He drowns men, sinks warships, and has power over the winds and the sea, but he will not hurt anyone if commanded to forbear by the exorcist. He hopes to return to the seventh thrones in years. Sabanuk, a mighty marquis, appears in the form of an armed soldier, having a lion's head, and riding on a pale-colored horse. He builds towers, camps, and cities, fortifies the same, torments men with putrid sores swarming with worms. He gives good familiars. Vipa, a great duke, appears as a mermaid. He guides the waters and battleships, and occasions storms at sea when so commanded by the magician. He also causes the sea to seem full of ships, and occasions death in three days by means of putrefying sores and worm-eaten wounds. Shax, a great marquis, comes in the form of a stock doe, speaking with a hoarse voice. He destroys the sight, hearing and understanding of any man or woman at the will of the exorcist, steals money from the king's exchequer, and returns it in years. He will transport anything, but first must be commanded into the triangle, otherwise he will deceive the operator. He discovers all hidden things which are not in the keeping of wicked spirits, and gives good familiars. Vine, a great king and earl, appears in a monstrous form, but assumes human shape when commanded. He discerns things hidden, reveals witches, and makes known the past, 
present, and future. At the command of the exorcist, he will build towers, demolish walls, and makes the waters stormy. Bifrons, a great earl, appears in a monstrous form, but assumes the human shape when commanded. He gives proficiency in astrology, geometry, and other mathematical arts. He teaches the virtue of herbs, precious stones, and woods. He changes dead bodies, puts them in other places, and lights phantom candles on their graves. Vual, a great duke, comes first as an enormous dromedary, but afterwards assumes human form and speaks in the Egyptian tongue. He procures the love of women, discerns past, present and future, and excites friendship even between foes. He was of the order of powers. Hagenti, a great president, appears in the shape of a gigantic bull with the wings of a griffin, but will duly put on human form. He gives wisdom, transmutes metals into gold, and turns wine into water. Procel appears in the form of an angel and is a great strong duke. He speaks mystically of hidden things, teaches geometry and the liberal sciences, and at the command of the operator will make a great commotion like that of running waters. He also warms waters and tempers baths. He was of the order of the powers before his fall. Fercus, a great duke, appears in the form of a cruel old man with a long beard and hoary hair. He is settled on a pale horse and has a sharp spear in his hand. He teaches philosophy, rhetoric, astronomy, logic, chiromancy and pyromancy, perfectly in all their parts. Balaam, a terrible and powerful king, appears with three heads, the first like that of a bull, the second like that of a man, and the third like a ram's. With the tail of a serpent and eyes flaming fire, he rides upon a furious bear, carrying a goshawk on his wrist and speaking with a hoarse voice. He gives true answers as to past, present and future, makes men go invisible and imparts wit. Alakan, a strong duke, appears in the form of a soldier, mounted on a great horse, his face like that of a lion, exceedingly red, his speech hoarse and loud. He teaches astronomy and the liberal sciences and gives a good familiar. Kaim, a great president, appears in the form of a thrush, but afterwards in that of a man bearing a sharp sword and seeming to answer in burning ashes. He is a keen disputant. He imparts men the understanding of bird songs, the lowing of cattle, the barking of dogs, and the voice of waters. He gives true answers concerning things to come and was once of the order of angels. Murmur, a great duke and earl, appears in the form of a soldier riding on a griffin and having a duke's crown on his head. He is preceded by two ministers sounding trumpets. He teaches philosophy perfectly and constrains the souls of the dead to appear and to answer questions. He was partly of the order of thrones and partly of angels. Orobas, a great prince, appears first like a horse, but when commanded, in human form. He discovers past, present and future. He gives good dignities and advancements with the favor of friends and foes. He will reply concerning the creation of the world and divinity. He is very faithful to the exorcist and defends him from temptation by any spirit. Gomori, a powerful duke, appears like a beautiful woman wearing a ducal crown. He discovers past, present and future, as also the whereabouts of hidden treasures. He procures the love of women and especially of girls. Oisi, a great president, appears at first like a leopard and then in human shape. He gives skill in all liberal sciences and true answers concerning divine and secret things. He can change men into any shape that the exorcist may desire, and he that is changed will not know it. Amai, a great president, comes first as a great flaming fire and then as a man. He gives perfect knowledge of astrology and the liberal sciences with good familiars and can betray treasures that are kept by spirits. Orias, a great marquis, appears in the form of a lion bestriding a strong horse. He has a serpent's tail and holds two enormous hissing snakes in his right hand. He teaches the virtues of the planets and the mansions thereof. He transforms men, gives dignities, prelates and confirmations with the favor of friends and foes. Vapula, a strong duke, comes in the form of a lion with a griffin's wings. He gives skill not only in manual professions, but also in philosophy and the sciences. Zagan, 
a great king and president, appears at first in the form of a bull with the wings of a griffin and after in human shape. He makes men witty, turns water into wine, blood into oil, and oil into water. He can change any metal into coin of the realm and can make fools wise. Balak, a great president, comes as a little boy with the wings of an angel and riding on a two-headed dragon. He gives true answers concerning hidden treasures, tells where serpents may be seen, and will deliver them helpless to the exorcist. Andras, a great marquis, comes in the form of an angel with the head of a strong black wolf, and having a sharp bright sword gleaming in his hands, he sows discord and will kill the unwary. Koronzon, Flauros, a great duke, appears at first like a terrible leopard, but at the command of the exorcist, he puts on the shape of a man with fiery eyes and terrible countenance. He gives true answers of things past, present and future, but unless commanded into the triangle, he will deceive the exorcist. He converses gladly of divinity and the creation of the world, as also of the fall of spirits, his own included. If desired, he will destroy and burn the enemies of the operator, nor will he suffer him to be tempted by spirits or otherwise. Andrealphus, a mighty marquis, appears at first in the shape of a peacock, with a great noise, but after puts on human shape. He teaches geometry perfectly and all that belongs to measurements, astronomy included. He can transform men into the likeness of a bird. Cimeres, a powerful marquis, he appears like a valiant soldier on a black horse. He rules the spirits in the parts of Africa. He teaches grammar, logic and rhetoric, discovers hidden treasures and things lost and hidden. He can make a man appear like a soldier of his own kind. Amduscius, a great duke, comes first like a unicorn, but will stand up at request in human shape, causing all manner of musical instruments to be heard, but not seen. He makes trees fall at the will of the operator and gives excellent familiars. Belial, a mighty king created next after Lucifer, appears in the form of a beautiful angel, seated in a chariot of fire and speaking with a pleasant voice. He fell first among the superior angels who went before Michael and other heavenly angels. He distributes preferences of senatorships, causes favors of friends and foes, and gives excellent familiars. He must have offerings and sacrifices made to him. Decarabia, a marquis, comes in the form of a star in a pentacle, but puts on the image of man at command. He decovers the virtues of herbs and precious stones, makes birds seem to fly before the exorcist, and remain with him as familiars, singing and eating like other birds. Seer, a mighty prince under a maimon, king of the east, appearing in the form of a beautiful man on a strong-winged horse. He brings all things to pass suddenly, transports to any place in the twinkling of an eye, and discovers all thefts. He is indifferently good or bad, and will do the will of the operator. And how? This guy got me a new house in less than a week. He goes straight in at number one. Difficult to see but definitely does what he is asked, Choronzon. Dantalion, a mighty duke, appears in the form of a man with many faces of men and women and has a book in his right hand. He teaches all arts and sciences, declares all secret counsels for all human thoughts and can change them at his will. He kindles love and shows the similitude of any person in a vision wheresoever they may be. Andromalius, a great duke and earl, appears in the form of a man holding a serpent in his hand. He returns stolen goods and the thief discovers all wickedness and underhand dealing as also hidden treasures.